What's going on YouTube? Um, I'm back with another video. I'm gonna be looking at this 150 Shimano and I'll show you, it's got a lot of details on it and I'll show you that here in just a second. I'm gonna try to do better than I did on my last video. Um, I know it was like an hour long. I'm trying to get back in the swing of things after being gone for so long. So uh, just bear with me, but here we go, let's start. Well, I was uh, editing the video. Um, I wasn't going to actually probably release this video because of um, I messed up. I didn't turn on the camera that I needed to turn on and I just didn't know if it was gonna be, be worth it. However, um, I did find about halfway through I turned on my camera. So if, uh, here at the beginning, if you don't want to, which I put pictures in, so if you wanna see it, um, and look at the pictures and kind of hear me talk about it and you can kind of see a side view but you can't get the upper view of it just uh scroll till about midway through or so um and you'll see that i actually able to switch over to a chest cam at that point and i actually go over the parts a little more about putting them on after i kind of get past my frustration i was pretty angry um and kind of disappointed in myself for not starting the camera but um anyway i just wanted to hop in here and tell you that as I uh, as I edit this, and hopefully it'll still turn out to be a decent video for you guys, especially if you're looking to see the parts inside of the the Shimano 150. Well, guys, I'm kind of disappointed. I went through this video all the way to this point, and where I'm already cleaning and putting things back together, and my cam that I had that I thought was running on. My chest here has not even began to run. All right, everyone. As I'm getting started, yet again, I'm going to attempt this in another way. I'll still have the pictures. I hope I can do a little better even with the pictures on that and get this uh, going. I also have uh, brought in another light, so that way maybe we can even keep from having the darkness that I have in the area that I'm recording. So anyway, I'm not going to talk too much in this one. I'm going to try to hurt and get to it. The other one was an hour long and I'm trying to get this cut back so it doesn't take as long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start slowly going through the breakdown so that way you can kind of see it, but I'm going to actually do it pretty quick. Almost every bait caster has a locking screw that holds the cap that has some sort of teeth or something to, to keep from having this. Um, I said I didn't use this tool very much, but I actually do, um, especially with bait casters, because they they fit this uh, this uh, nut right here a little better. And you can see that one was just barely tight. That's exactly how you want to how you want them to be. This one's different if you notice the loose that come off the top right there. Looks like uh, it's got flat on one side, pins on one side. This has a pin that has to go in that way. All right, and then this one's a little different than the loose. It actually has a spring. And then a block here, it looks like it's actually the drag system tree. That holds the spring and actually sets up into that. So this is a little different design. All right, let's see how there's three, three more there.
force that spring out uh, as you see here open which means you I believe this is a bar uh, this is my first Shimano so I'm some of this stuff I'm doing as I'm going but that flips up to open that's that we'll go ahead and pull the spool look here on the outside I do not see any screws on the outside of this one they're all located under here and here and I believe that might be one there but we're going to take we're going to try it first before we take that out so that way we can kind of slowly remove things as they go switch over to the smaller screwdriver like I said I do not like to scar up anything I don't have to Alright, this is something I wanted to show you in one of the other videos. As you notice, every screw here is different sizes. So what I would like, what I want to do is I want to try to see, remember where I line, where I take these out and how I hold it when I took these out. So I could put all these different size screws. One really small screw right here may be holding, holding this back. So let's take that back. Let's take that out. And it doesn't seem to be spinning there. So now what I do is I reach back for one more. I got one more size. But this one's going to do it. I line them up so I can have them there. Screw here, screw here, screw inside of here, and a screw right underneath your button which opens this up which we're going to slowly remove and set here and while I do that I want to show you that there's a washer on the top of this right here alright that up there and now get a good idea what this side looks like Now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the springs. I've already taken a picture of this, I believe. We're going to pull that guy out. Let's go ahead and take that out. Yep, that's the right size. Let me get a picture. So. And I don't know if y'all noticed that, but that actually is spring loaded when I pulled that out. Popped out. That's why you take your pictures just in case something crazy happens, because that actually sits up up there like that. But it's connected to the spring. These are not mine, so I want to be very careful. But I do want to give the best cleaning service that I can for this. And that spring sits in that in, in that hole in that arm. We're gonna set that there. And you see there's a this whole button here. I wanna I'm gonna scrub all around in here and get it all the way clean and then re oil some of this.
and I'm just looking now at the best way to remove this bar has to be able to come out and I believe if I'm not mistaken it's being held in with a pin on uh, with this here and on it, this side with this pin now this one's really small I'm going to see if I can very gently slide this one out just like that which I know that um, I'm not sure how in the world I'm actually going to get that back in there but I, and I didn't take a picture let's uh let's put this right here back it has a pin on this side too but I don't think we need to remove that pin I think we can just uh, leave that side on that way we know what we got there I hope y'all can see so I just something just to get just barely underneath the edge to pop this lip up because it has a raised piece of them there and then after you pull the pin and pull the bar out that kind of pops off and comes off that's kind of important though because you want to be able to to get all the way down to this sometimes these are kind of hard to come out alright so I hope you see that there's a little cap on the end of that that has to go back into this piece and all I'm going to do is just kind of tap it to try to get it to roll out spin the gear a little bit alright that worked so I spun this gear and I got that to, to kind of pop out a little bit with it angled down and that's that bar and like in the other video those teeth have to go into that because they ride up and down that area I mean that 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 bar right in there so I'm gonna put this right here next to that but so now the question is do we pull the pin off the gear and we pull the pin off the other side now I prefer to leave the gear if we can so I'm going to pull this pin you definitely want to be real careful you do not want to lose one of these clamps and you can very very quickly trust me spent an hour trying to find one of these little pins one time I dropped that hit my it actually landed in my shoe that hit it I thought it hit the floor in it but it landed in my shoe okay whoa 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 all right let me see if I can get a quick picture there are two washers in this one when I took this out there were two washers in this one okay there's a third washer right there It should only slide out not this direction but this direction because it's the wider one it should only go in one way because it has the grooves I guess this is a good point to take a picture too now this bar can only go one way that it's got a tapered pin just like the other one and now you have basically your shell and we're not going to take you the I mean we could you know push and pull all these extra buttons out but truthfully at this point there's nothing really we need to do because um, we can easily clean this and then grease this this wheel right here just by pulling it up a little and putting a little grease under it so we don't need to really break that down but this is this is it this is all the way down to the core As you see we have this all the way break this is this is just about broke down as far as it that you can break one down do you need to do this every time you clean one you really do not you do not have to break it down this far 
a lot of times you can just get down to the outside, scrub it a little, wipe it a little, squeeze a little grease and oil back into it, and you're going to be okay for your real quick cleaning maintenance. However, if you're really going to clean one and you really want to get everything and make sure you get to everything, you really got to break one all the way down. Now, it takes a while. In the last video, you said it took me an hour, the hour on that video to do it. I'm going to try to shorten it this time. I'm moving a little quicker. But to clean it, it actually took me quite a bit longer to clean that loose because of how you had to break it all down. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean. There are a few parts that I did not break down out of here. I didn't pull the bearings out of that. I'm going to do that last. That's an anti-reverse bearings that's in there. But I like to do those when I get to those pieces just because it's a habit, I guess. It's not really important. Again, I'm using this one today and I'm not gonna, I don't want to spray toward that area so I got them under my rag I'm just gonna, just gonna do one little piece at a time oh well guys I'm kind of disappointed I um, have done I went through this video all the way to this point and where I'm already cleaning and putting things back together and my cam that I had that I thought was running on my chest here has not even began to run so um, I'm extremely angry and disappointed at the moment I'm not really sure that this is going to make the video but uh, or make make YouTube but um, you know what I'm gonna I'll, I'll tell you what I've done to this point and I'll show you pictures. So basically I've broken everything off of this except the button, oiled and greased and cleaned. Uh, I have pictures of everything, which I guess it's not going to really matter to you if you can't see me do it, but to access this bar, you pull this pin here, pull this clip off of this pin, this pin slides apart, this piece opens up and pops off from this side here, and then it slides out here you don't have to pull that clip off it'll slide all the way out and to remove this part once that's done once that's off then you can remove this cap remove that pin and that washer and you'll see in the picture there's a couple of washers in the inside and this bar will slide out but after you take this cap off there's another pin inside of that you'll see that uh, in a picture as well I'll show you that however uh, I don't know um, if I should even continue honestly I'm just, just uh, discouraged. So basically, I actually broke this all the way down. These two screws right here come out. Uh, be careful when you undo those screws because it is spring-loaded. This guy right here moves and it's spring-loaded and connected to this. So that way, when you press the button, that it moves it, it moves this stuff back and forth. And um, underneath here is a bearing that I just pushed out from the other side. I grease with my fingers with the the um, oil and put a little grease around the edge and put it back in and then I greased on around this area so where these button slides I grease on the plate there put this grease on the back side of this plastic so when it slid around it because it locks into place or I'm sorry not locks into place but it moves as this is locked into place and I greased the inside of this so that way it was when you move it it doesn't you know gum up and you can see I, I might ought to squeeze a little more in here just to make sure that we're we get a good click and we don't have any problems and then I'm just going to move it again I'll use my my little synthetic thing here to do it I just want to make sure that I've got it and I don't want to have anything that moves that doesn't have grease uh, while I was here working as well, I also added some grease back into this hole. I cleaned everything out, took everything off and scrubbed it and put it all back. Um, hopefully the pictures will answer most of your questions on where stuff goes. Um, I think I want to go ahead and continue this just so that way you can have it. Um, I was trying a different camera system. Uh, There's a lot that I um, spoke to you about and showed you and different things. But up to this point, um, the only thing uh, 
the the most difficult part is to remember that there's a that this pin and then there's another pin that slides inside of this right here that is tapered and on this side it only comes in one section and on on this side it's underneath this and it slides through this right here helps hold that pin into place and there's nothing that holds it except this and to take this off you take this off this clip off slide the pin out and this will tilt and you pop it off of this little nub here and this will come off and then that gives you access to that bar and to move to take that off and to take all that off and now um, just to kind of recap what I've done is I've cleaned it all the way off I use cleaning solution scrub it with a toothbrush wiped it all the way off and got all the cleaning solution off with a rag and then I squirted grease on this before I put it back in and coated all the teeth and then once I had it all coated I put it all back together and screwed and then I used a little bit of real oil this is real butter oil but it's real oil and I put drops in there and I spin the bar let's see where's the I there spin that I spun this bar to mix it up a little and then uh, when I got it to this side I put a little more in spun it some more to get that loosened up and then we put this snap this side back on it lines up here the bar pushes through right here pops out on this side you put your clip back on it all right there's a washer on the don't take the clip off of the gear here leave that one on that one's not going to hurt anything you'll take that clip off right there when this is off it's much easier to get to and then there's a washer there and then then again i'm going to repeat there's two more washers on the inside of here on this this gear box inside of here clean the gear plate real good i use q-tips and i make sure that there's no old dirt grime and grease inside this plastic once this comes off this plastic housing right here I guess you would call it is inside it has a groove that only comes up on this side and then you pull it all the way out on this side and you can clean all that and get it all clean inside of here is a pin that pin has to come out before you can take out take the take the bar out so that needs to be done um, very very similar to the lose video if you want to jump on the lose video and, and kind of scroll back over to that you can kind of see this the same kind of thing only difference is this had a couple of washers and, and it doesn't have a bearing in, inside of it like it did on the lose but that's where we're at at this point um, again I apologize I don't know if maybe I shouldn't be making videos at this point I don't know I'm uh, pretty disappointed at this at the moment so I'm just going to uh, move forward that screw is very tight I don't want to strip it so I'm just going to add oil to this that's a pretty good bit I shouldn't have maybe put that much but I'm going to spin it to work it all the way down into the bearings again I didn't put any cleaning solution on this all I done was just wiped it with a rag because I don't want I can't get that off so I don't want to I'm going to uh, before I got frustrated and, and lost my, my thing I'm going to actually put some oil or excuse me going to put some grease you, you you might not even want to go down this far uh, but I, I'm going to tell you that at least down to pulling this gear right here out is going to make a difference that area right here is the to me one of the keys to keeping it smooth this is open to everything so it's going to catch dirt and grime and junk and that's why it's got such a big gap and really it just spools your line back and forth it just moves your line back and forth so it goes on your spool clean but it also can cause it to have all kind of issues with uh, like catching and stuff like that that's where that actually comes from all right I greased that up I'm going to go ahead and put this one in before I grease it because I don't want to get grease on the bearings and this only this only this, this has only one way that it can be screwed back in it has certain screw holes and it has to sit in the teeth of that because this is going to make that bar roll all right it's got to be snug you just don't want it to come out 
All right. Again, I'm just going ahead and just I'm just tightening up this snug. I don't want it to strip out the screws. I don't want it to hurt anything. All right, now I'm going to go back in here with this grease. Get the grease and all back in there the way it should be on those gears. Because if they, even if they squish around in there, then I know that they're protected and they have what they need on them. Uh, it's this guy, and he actually goes in like this. So I'm going to clean it off because you can see it's got, this is sometimes where the oil is the, and the oil and the grease is the darkest. And I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to spray it, and I'm going to clean it with toothbrush. I'll put a little dab right here at the, the mouth. And then I'm going to hopefully use a synthetic cotton swab to go all the way through that I used to, re, to put oil back on. And, or put grease back on. Like I said, I'm going to mess up the whole day. That looked like it had a little more gunk in it. I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to grease this all the way up. Grease all in those teeth here. Let me get back in the light so you can see. See this right here? It has a bunch of caked on in it. I'm going to clean that up, make sure all that's gone. We're going to put it right back with some fresh. That teeth goes down, locks onto the bottom of the spool. These teeth go up. These slide right down here. There's a groove for this to sit in. It slides in there and sits in there and locks. These springs you see have just a little bit of old grease on them. I'm going to wipe them off. Slide them right back on where they belong here. And then what I like to do is I like to come back then and put just a little in the springs because they do move. So what I'm going to do is this, this gear here, I'm just going to wipe it off. This can only go on in a certain way, and I've already put grease up there, so I'm going to just slide this on and let it drop all the way down to where it needs to be. Fits into a, a slot right in there. Part of the braking system, I want to come to a clean part of my rag. This is a hard plate, but you can break it, so you have to be careful. If you snap this, then you're going to have to go find this. You cannot have this. Your drag will not work without that in there. So I'm not greasing any of this because I don't. None of this. This is all breaking. It shouldn't be too greased anyway. This is the part. I'm leaving that part off for the moment, and I'm going to show you this part right here. And well, this one actually comes out. Some of these do not, or some of them's been used so much that they are actually locked into place and they will not come out. But this one come out, so that's a great thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this all the way down. And now I can actually spray the whole thing and scrub it with a toothbrush and clean out all the teeth. What I want to do is I want to go through here and put some of this grease all the way around these teeth. Because these teeth are going to run in those teeth. It's going to make a difference. Take my finger and I'm just going to kind of tap, tap, tap and rub. I want to get every bit of, I want to try to get grease in every tooth. I'm going to take this, I'm going to slide this all the way over. And I, you'll have to, if you'll notice, you'll have to wind that up so it falls into those teeth. And I'm going to clean these brakes real carefully. I do not want to put pressure on these brakes at all. I do not want any damage done to those, plate, those, those uh, pads. And just put it back in its spot. I'm going to clean this off for you right here where you can see it. That gap must go down because it has a raise there. That's got this side put all the way back together. All right. And you can refer back to the pictures if you'd like. And you can see that where it's been put back together. Um, I do have pictures of how this other stuff goes on. Um, at the beginning of this video, I made mention of these screws and where they come out of, and I'll show you that when I get ready to put them back on. Um, they are a certain way that they go on. They're all different sizes. 
so there's a certain way that they go on and I'll show you how to do that now let's move into this um, here uh, this is the anti-reverse system in the rod and reel I mean in the reel so uh, this section here I'm going to pull it apart so you can see it there's a bearing and a washer on the top I want to take pictures. Washer and the sleeve in the center, that underneath that. And what I've done is, is I know that that bearing is was on top of that. So I'm going to pull the sleeve out through the bottom. That's the sleeve that goes in between the two. And this one is this one has notches in it, so those notches fit in, in those grooves. It doesn't have a tapered side. It has notches, okay? So that goes in just like that. And then what I have here is this tool, and I talked about this tool before that I didn't use it very much, but with bait casters I actually do. I meant to fix that. But basically what I want to do is this, this anti-breaking system. There's a couple of different things you can do. You can either try to keep on until you get this out, or believe it or not, it is not as vital for that part to come out. You can take a pair of pliers. I would not if I would. I would not squeeze this. I would not do anything to this. The problem that you have with these anti these uh these anti reverse bearings is they will pop out. Those little bars in there are the bearings and they will pop out. I don't like messing with those. It took me hours one time to fix one of those coming out. They were they were they were rusted and they needed to to be removed and cleaned, and which I did. But it took me forever to get them back in. But I'm going to show you a trick that I like to use, and you don't have, you don't that way you don't have to take it all the way apart if you want. You take a rag or a cloth, run this in here. Now this, like I said, they're anti-reverse. So what you can do is as you twist. And if it spins, you're going the right way. Now this one's allowed me to spin both ways because of my my rag, I think. But yep, it spins fine this way. You go back this way, it starts bending my rag. So basically, what I've done is you can see on my rag here, there was junk in that those bearings. That's really the only way that I know to clean those. Now, if you want to take those out. Mm -hmm. And, and you know really dig around and mess with them you can I'm not going to do that but with these bearings these bearings are a little different so um, once I've knocked off most of the that I could see and I've rolled around a bunch of times I'm going to take my grease with these bearings I'm going to put a little in here all right just a just a little squirt there and then I'm not I'm not not going to use a cotton swab. I'm going to use the synthetic. I do not want those those strings in there. And then I'm going to roll this around in these bearings like that. I'm going to spread that grease out just to, just as good as I can. Now, just like with that other part, I'm going to go back in here with these with this oil, and I'm actually going to uh, put a little and spin it. Put a little and spin it. Put a little and spin it. Okay. Now to spread that out, this is a this is kind of a I, I like to do it this way. It's kind of a cool little trick to me. Is you take a and clean the uh, the center shaft or whatever this is. You clean it off. Make sure you get it good and clean before you try this. I'll go all the way up in there. You can use a Q-tip if you want. I, I, at this point, I start using the rag uh, just because I can kind of get the rag through a little easier. And then I can roll it around like this. And I, that way I know that I've absolutely got everything out of there. And then what I'll do is I'll take this back, put it in between it, and I'll hold it with my fingers, and I'll run it around to work the that in the barren. Now see, if as, I'm going to see if I can show you here. See, as long as I'm going this way, 
it spins fine. When I go back the other way, if you'll notice, that will not spin back. So it'll spin this way, but it will not spin. That's your anti-reverse. That way you can't spin real backwards in your reel. Okay? Now I'm going to just, I guess I'm just going to leave that in there because there's no reason for it to come back out. We'll put it back on. We'll start putting the other stuff back together. All right, I'm going to move this over because there was a washer at the bottom. I'm going to wipe it down. And um, you know what? I jumped a gun, guys. I've got so excited and or frustrated or however you want to say it that I did not finish cleaning this top lid. I did not go through the cleaning thing. So I'm going to have to be very careful now and use just a little little on I'm, I'm using a dry rag to wipe it down this is all cosmetic this doesn't need regreasing or anything like that this is all just cosmetic and I'm just going to wipe it all down I'm going to take a q-tip and get in between all these little grooves because I want it clean and I like to send it back as best as I can send it there is a uh, the braking system bearing here, um, as you can see, it's dirty. I'm going to just clean it up. Uh, like I said, because that spring's in the other side, and I don't know why um, it's there. But I mean, I know why it's there, but I don't know how to get it out. And honestly, I don't think it, it matters too much. Um, I can get to the bearing just fine of the real oil there and that's going to take care of that all right so this has been clean this is all the way clean and all the way more or less together so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to stick it right back on to to here and let me let me do this um it's going to be easier to line this up if we do it this way we'll take this out and these have certain grooves that this sits in. And you see once you get the grooves set, it actually goes all the way down to the bottom. And what you're going to find is, is doing it that way, and then trying to get it to line up this way, is going to save you a lot of heartache and trouble. Now that spring started to slip. I wanted to readjust that spring. Now we're going to drop this over that. It's going to line up fairly, it should line up fairly easy. But we want to be real careful because there's those springs are in here and we want those springs to line up correctly and lock into place. But we do not want them to fall off. This is the way that I took this off. Now I'm holding it because the springs are pushing back against me. But those screws are all different sizes. So what I wanted to make sure I'd done is laid them out and remembered the way I held this so that way I can put all these screws back in the way they come out. This one was the top. And I recommend, uh, if, if, you, if you can't see mine or see how I'm doing it, or if this doesn't help you you're, and, and you're looking at a different model maybe, line your screws up. Make sure you have this all lined up before you take it apart. Make sure you, you, you have this or label them or, or whatever. Now I'm not putting a, a hulking twist down on these. I'm only putting in a good, nice, snug fit. I do not want to strip these screws and I do not want to put too much pressure on. All right, and this last one that is right here. And this one's uh, a little different screw, but you could you could see it. So the little, got a little smaller head. I may have to switch back over to the other screwdriver. I think I am, actually. That have a different, smaller bit to be able to take this one out. I'll have to do the same thing, put it back in. That's got that pretty much together. And I'm going to wipe it down again because I have a little bit of oil or grease on my hands. And um, we'll do that. But now, let's finish up this. And this goes right here on the top. It drops down there. I'm going to take this top one off. I'm going to take this bearing, and I, when I picked it up, I can literally feel dirt on it. So I want to, I'm going to, since I can take this one out, I'm going to blast it with my cleaner. Excuse me. 
and then I'm going to scrub this. I'm not pushing down on it. I, I, I'm not like I'm scrubbing across it. I'm not pushing down because I don't want to take any of the dirt or grime or anything and drive it into the barren. I just want to knock it off the outside. And I'm going to wipe all the solution off and I'm going to, I'm going to spin this barren in this uh, rag. And now I don't feel any dirt or grimer on it. Now what I want to do, and this is why I said I wasn't going to put anything on that because I'm fixing to put enough on this on both sides. And I'm going to roll it around in my fingers because I want to get as much if it'll go in there as I can to go in there. Like that. Drop that on. Take this. Clean it. Alright, drop this back on. Now, this is part of this, this, this is the, the braking system, or part of it. Don't know why that there's oil in there on that, but um, I try not to oil that too much, um, but I will clean it. And while I'm fishing sometimes, I'll, and, and if I notice that, that I can't, you know, this, this the slides too much or something, you can actually take that off, stick your shirt in there, wipe it off, and then go back down on it, and you can actually give you a little more resistance. And that goes over this spring and drops right back on there. With the spring, it's kind of weird. You don't want to cross-thread it, but you want to make sure you, you get it on there right. And it should go on fairly easy, especially without the, the spool in there, okay? And that's that for that. These pieces all line up together. And that's how they go. This one's on the top. Those are below. In the beginning, I had a picture. Let's see. Let's see. And I'm hoping that these pictures are going to save this video. But it, it may not. And if it doesn't, then I apologize. But I wanted to show you here. See how those line up? They've got to be gapped. They cannot be going the same way, and that one's on the top. So what we're going to do is we're just going to clean it. And all I'm doing is just wiping the crud off, getting the grime off of it. I'm not flipping it, turning it, or switching it around. I'm literally flat, rubbing it between two fingers in my rag. And then it only goes, it's, it's, ta it's got a tapered inside, so it only goes on one way. And then I'm doing the other one the exact same way. I don't want to change it. I'm just going to rub it down like that right there. And you'll see it's clean. It goes back on there. I'm not spinning it, not flipping it. It goes on there. I'm going to wipe this one down. That goes on the top of that, and this is uh, this is basically your your true part of your um, uh, drag. This is the part that's going to actually fit up into into this and turn your drag with your spring. However, it's going to loosen off of that. You'll see. I'll put it in here the right way. I hope. And so I'm wiping. I'm just wiping this down. This doesn't matter very much. It's going to be threaded. So it's going to get down to a certain point. And in this one, just so you know, it has a groove. A flat side and a groove. That groove must go up because that spring will sit down in there. All right. And now what you do is you don't want to force it, but you do want to let that spin all the way down. Do not want to cross thread that. You cross thread that, it's not going to work. It's not going to give you, it's not going to do you any good. All right, so now I've got that down at least a little tight to here, but I held this and spin it, spun it on down if you couldn't see it. Now the spring goes in here. I'm just going to lightly wipe the spring just because of everything I try to do. I try to clean it. That sits down in there like that. This plate, I'm going to clean it off, but we're going to not put it on just yet because it's last. I'm just going to wipe it off because I'm going to have it clean. And then this, I'm going to clean this as well. Not too hard. There's a little piece here that you do not want to pop out. 
it's already trying to act a little squirrely, but I'm going to just be real gentle, not flip it over. I don't want to flip it over because then I want the pin to fall out. It's going to clean around this real good, I hope, and then I'm going to reach up in the inside, which when I looked originally, I'm going to cover that up so it don't fall out. Take my rag, take my Q-tip, get around in there real good. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't that dirty. It's kind of unusual. Normally this dirt is where that is. And then I'm going to take this and um, kind of got to hold it because it wants to spin and tighten up too. But I'm going to kind of hold it until I got it to fall into that, that groove. And it should drop all the way down over the square because this thing rides on that square. Okay. And then I'm going to take this. This cap goes over there with that little pin. And with it spring loaded, what you want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have to let off so I can I can clean that other part and show you. But with that spring loaded, you got to be really careful because it's just going to push it right back up. Okay. It doesn't want to stand now. So we're just going to lay it over. And I'll clean this handle. See the dirt, grime, and junk that's in there. We're just going to wipe it all the way off. I'm going to switch over to my uh, other rag that's got some cleaning solution on it. Kind of just use my thumb and some things like that to really just clean this all the way off. Um, if you need to, you can go ahead and get your uh, spray it scrub it with a toothbrush if you need to um, I'm going to take this q-tip and clean out around it wipe down all the, the knobs now what I want to do is I'm going to go back in here I'm going to push this all the way back down until it fits in the right way it should fit right back over the block just like that push this down and then again you do not want to cross thread this you want to make sure it goes on smooth it should come on just just fine without any without any pressure or any problems and then once you have that on take your tool and you just snug it up not super tight just snug it up and then your safety cap will go on here now when you get ready to put this on if it doesn't line up you can give it a little or take it off a little and then from here you drop your the lock screw this is what locks this in if without this then you would and again it's just it's just snug and then when it does it holds this in and you don't have to worry about that anymore this here this bearing could come all the way out um, you could you could take the screws out and get into the gears but there's springs and different things in here and and honestly most of the time this right here unless you're having a problem with cast excuse me and most time if uh, only if you have problems with casting or whatever do you ever find that this is going to be a problem so I'm getting more q-tips so I can clean uh, so you don't normally want to take this apart I, I wouldn't it, it's not as vital as in cleaning it this right here doesn't do a whole lot as long as you don't get water in it this system in here normally is pretty self-contained um, what I'm doing now is just running a q-tip around in here getting some of the dirt and grime and dust and stuff it gets in here out I'm just again it's just a light touching and the only thing I'm gonna do that that I would say for you to do in here other than what I'm doing now is to just kind of wipe around in that barren with a q-tip finish wiping in there take your real oil and just give it a couple little dots in there see there not even hardly put any in there but it's enough to make it wet in there so I, I, and that that would be all I've done to that I'd wipe down the outside and clean off some of the the buttons and twist the gears and stuff like that but I would not do very much of I'll um, just uh, clean the outside uh, wipe it down scrub it um, I'll turn the dials so just be real careful I just don't I, I, I can and I have and I will take these apart but I'm, I'm for this sake of this video we're just showing you how to clean and this anyway we'll just leave it like it is
So I'm just going to, again, clean this up. All this stuff I've got greased on the way around on both sides, so they're going to be just fine. So anyway, this only goes in one way. The long shaft goes through to the other side, locks in there. This, just like uh, just like we took it off, it's got a button, slaps, slides on, twist, flip the button, and that's that.